Today on the program, we look at issues of law, inter-African trade, and globalization against the background of the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, AFTA, which has become one of the major economic topics in Africa, with the goal of creating a single market followed by free movement and a single currency union, we look at the readiness of Nigerian lawyers and the legal practice for an era of free trade and services, and the tactical withdrawal of Nigeria from giving its assent to the AFTA agreement. Our guests will shed more light on these issues in our interview segment. We also have a report on how the judiciary has fared three years into President Mohamed Buhari's tenure, plus our weekly recap of the top trending stories from the courtrooms. Hello and welcome to this episode of Law Weekly. I am Shola Shuyeli. The African Continental Free Trade Area is the result of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement among all 55 members of the African Union. If ratified, the agreement will result in the largest free trade area in terms of participating countries since the formation of the World Trade Organization. African heads of state gathered in Kigali, Rwanda in March 2018 to sign the proposed agreement. 44 of the 55 members of the African Union signed it on the 21st of March 2018. Nigeria tactically declined to sign. President Muhammad Buhari was reported to have been particularly reluctant to sign if it will hurt Nigerian industries and entrepreneurs. The United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, however, estimates that the agreement will boost intra-African trade by 52% by the year 2022. While Nigeria is still consulting over the issue, there are many business lawyers who believe that it is a step in the right direction and the country must begin to prepare for an era of intra-African trade. To shed more light on the issue is a commercial lawyer with extensive experience in corporate law and restructuring, corporate and project financing, construction and infrastructure, and energy law. Mr. Oke Ebuchu is also a council member of the Nigerian Bar Association section on business law. I began the interview by asking him to first explain the relationship between law and trade. Well, law is the foundation of every business trade because when we have an agreement, that is contract, that is law. When countries have agreements to trade with each other, either in intra-Africa or world over, that is business, that is law, that is a treaty that regulates that relationship. We have many of them like NAFTA, the European Union, they have treaties that regulate trade. So the difference really is sometimes it's formal, like I just mentioned treaties or contracts, sometimes it's informal. I can have an agreement with you, please bring this to me, I'll pay you this. We've not written down anything. But we have had an agreement, and if we need to prove it, we have to testify. These are the differences. You know, otherwise, law is the foundation of every single trade or business that we do, and it orders our rights and duties and expectations. If you were to do a critical analysis of the legal market across Africa, how would you describe the status of inter-Africa, that's cross-border legal services across the continent? I think it's very low. Um, from my own personal experience, what we do get is we, you know that lawyers practice in different jurisdictions. I can practice in Ghana, for instance. So what we basically do is we brief each other in different jurisdictions for, to protect our clients' interests. Sometimes we have to do a linkage in many countries with all the lawyers in all those countries, protecting the interests of our clients. To that extent, yes, it happens. Sometimes we also receive uh, instructions from outside the continent and they want us to manage transactions across many countries in Africa. So to that extent, it's fine. But there is not much, because the trade between African countries is low, it's quite limited. In fact, with most of us in Nigeria, commercial law firms get more instructions from Europe and America than we get from African countries. And with, um, yeah. Multinationals do business, yeah. Okay, so they brief us. Some of our, we, our countries do big ticket transactions. A lot of the financing comes from Europe and America. They are the ones who have the money to do this. So we do get briefed to represent the interest of clients. I can read out a dozen names of British law firms. 
if you ask me to name a law firm in Togo, I won't be able to name for you or Ghana. You know, we don't even know ourselves. That's part of the problem we are having. There, we run different systems of law. We are aligned to our Veronia, various colonial masters. You know, so I know more British lawyers than I know French-based lawyers, for instance. You know, but I'm sure somebody in Togo will know more French-based lawyers than I do because they're probably getting a lot of instructions from from France and the and the likes. So these are the issues, but we are getting there as business grows in Africa and as multinationals develop the dangotes of this world, they will take us across, they will take their lawyers, we Nigerians, across their different jurisdictions and the cross-border uh, briefs will grow bigger and so better. So that's the stage that we really need to get to? Uh, we will, eventually. Uh, but it's, it's going to be step by step as we integrate more in Africa and the economy is grow. So speaking about law and inter-Africa trade, how do you think that law has impacted Africa over the years? When we talk about law um, influencing inter-Africa trade in Africa, it's, we do not have a body of laws yet that is uniform. We just trade much like we did in Trans-Saharan, <laughs> during the Trans-Saharan era, people come travel, except there are borders now, people come travel, sell goods and go. There are a few commercial transactions here and there. But there is no standardization like you have in Europe, that's the European Union, where they have a treaty, they have standards that every good must meet before it can be sold across different jurisdictions. In NAFTA, that is not an American free trade agreement. We have uh, the agreement regulating the trade between Mexico, Canada, and United States. There are standards that must be met. And so enablers that must be put in place and protection for certain industries. Here is nothing. 